to the Italian Football Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to the Italian Football Podcast. I'm Carlo Garganese, joined as always by Nima Tavari. And on today's show we will react to the weekend Serie A action. Inter make it 13 wins in a row by winning at Champions League chasing Bologna. Milan move into second as Captain America, Christian Pulisic, is the superhero against Empoli. Juventus's dismal form continues as they can only draw against Atalanta. Juventus now have less points this season than they did at the same time last season. Lots of criticism for Max Allegri. Napoli's slim Champions League hopes take a hit as they are held at home by Torino. And at the bottom, um, the relegation race is absolutely insane right now, as Nima is, of course, delighted about. And we will preview the European matches. Big, big week of uh, European football in the Champions League and uh, the Europa League. And we'll also have our usual Baggio, Premface and Serie A Ass of the Week. For all our first-time listeners, this is our free weekly episode that we do every Monday, reviewing the weekend Serie action and all the biggest talking points in Italian football. If you want to support the Italian Football Podcast and receive all of our content that we do throughout the week, including a weekly Q&A episode every Tuesday, where we answer all of the questions from our patrons, plus the weekly Thursday midweek review show, plus interviews, post-match reaction and much, much more, then go to patreon.com slash TIFP and become a subscriber for just two ninety nine a month plus VAT. And you can also sign up to be a paid subscriber on Spotify. We'll provide the link in the description. It's the same price, the same terms. And for all of you that do listen on Spotify, Apple and iTunes podcasts, really appreciate if you give us a five star rating, give us a follow and a like. Um, You can do the same on our YouTube page. Uh, All of that really helps us to grow and do more quality content for you guys. Okay, let's get into today's show. So let's start off with the the two Sunday evening games and we'll start with Juventus against Atalanta. Um, big, big game for the, for the Champions League race uh, and also for Juventus. If we start off talking about this from the Juventus point of view, uh, the, the game of course finished 2-2 but this was a this was a big game for Juventus because that they were in dismal form going into the match, only one win in six and they'd completely fallen out of the title race and we're now looking over their shoulder uh, at Milan um, who were right on their tails uh, and even potentially the likes of Bologna as well so so it was an important game for for Juventus and and a kind of a strange game to analyze from the Juventus point of view in the the first half they they largely had the game under control had lots of efforts but created nothing of note in terms of actual real chances then they went behind. Uh, the second half, Juventus were more threatening. Um, Chiesa came, was who was terrible in the first half, was was very good in the second half. Um, along with Cambiasso, those two kind of took the game to to Atalanta more, uh, and they turned it around. And they they um, they went two one ahead. And you think, well, Juventus are going to win from here. And then they let in a really stupid um, second goal for Coop Miners, his second of the game, and they draw two two. Um, so it was um, a strange game, Nima. I don't, I don't know. I, I thought it was a rather entertaining game. I mean, maybe defensively, Allegri wasn't too happy, and he has every right not to be happy. Um, and he, and he, he's famously said about how you know you can't concede two goals a game, you can't win games that way. Um, but I do. I, I thought it was a. I thought it was a rather entertaining game, to be honest. Um, I thought it was. I for the neutral, Juventus, for the neutral, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought it was an entertaining game, but I, I thought Juve. I I liked Juve's tenacity. I liked how Juve reacted um, uh, to to situations. Um, I, I think I think they were they looked good in the first half. Um, I thought they were they 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 looked in control. To be perfectly honest, um, the. the whether that was fool's gold or not, we can get into that. But I didn't feel, I felt like Juventus had turned a corner in terms of their bad form. They didn't look like they've done in previous games. I thought this was a step in the right direction from that aspect. Um, but the, they did concede a goal that somehow was a little bit against the run of play, if you will. Um, 
but but they reacted well to that. I mean, let's let's you know let's remember they 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 equalized um, pretty pretty well after I, I thought that move for the the equalizer was actually a nice move. Yeah, with, it was you know, a very good move. Yeah, very good move with Kiesa winning the ball and then to Weston McKenney who played a wonderful assist. I think that was his ninth assist this season, McKenney. Um, and and Cambiasso continues to have a breakout season. Um, and then of course McKenney again. Um, four minutes later for Milik, and and it kind of cemented that Juve had turned this game on its head. Um, but the problem is that what we've seen with Juve is that they're not really, or not really, they aren't there yet. This this season, in terms of stability, uh, in terms of not look, it look it looks better uh, than it did last season with pretty much the same players. I mean, they haven't exactly strengthened. Some would say they've weakened even. Um, but it, but it looks, but it's starting to look, it, it looks better this season than it did last uh, on the pitch. Maybe form points wise after 28 games, it's pretty much identical. And we're going to get into that too. But I think it's, it, it does look better um, than it did last season. And I think it, there is improvement there. Um, I just keep saying this week in, week out, and I firmly believe it. Juve, this Juve side aren't there yet. They, they are. They, they don't have that kind of experience to kill off games. They've got the experience to come back and never, never say die attitude. They, they've kind of got that. We've seen that throughout this season. They, they are such a t- difficult team to kill off. And if you don't kill them off, they will come back and turn the game on its head. And they've done it time and time and time again. You know, winning games late, coming, turning around deficits, and so on and so forth. But they're not there yet to be the top side that wins three points after doing that. They, they've still got a left, they've still got a little way, a little bit left to reaching that point uh, mentally as well as uh, qualitatively. Qualitatively especially, I, I don't think this is a very good Juventus side. It's identical with the one they had last season, if we're perfectly honest. So, you know, some would even argue it's a worse side than last season. But what we have seen on an individual level, I think, Vlaovic has improved this season compared to last. Western McKenney for sure. I mean, he's been. No one thought he would be this good. Um, and 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 so there are, you know, th- there are things to be positive about this season. But of course, if you're expecting Juve to win the Scudetto and have a fight to, you know, fight the, for the Scudetto until the end of the season, you're going to be disappointed. But I think that's more down to your expectations, to be honest. Uh, I think what Juventus fans want to see, if they're not winning, I think what fans of any club wants to see, if they're not winning trophies, top teams that is, if they're not winning trophies and they're they're not, um, you you know, like Juventus haven't won a trophy now, this is the third season without trophies, we'll see if they can win the the Coppa Italia this season. Um, Three seasons, you want to be seeing progress, you want to be seeing something being built um, for the future. Uh, and clear progress. And we're now in the third season of Allegri and we've had no progress at all. I mean, the stats are there in black and white. Um, 58 points this season now after 28 games. Um, This time last season, Juventus had 59 points. Um, They, of course, had 15 points deducted so that they were actually in the table on 44, but on the pitch, they had 59. So they they have one point less this season now after 28 games than they did at this time last season, which is which is which is terrible. Last season they were playing in Europe, they had no board, uh, there was complete chaos with all the stuff going on in the courts with with the penalties coming up, taking penalty, uh, taking points off, then on. Um, so they had all that kind of situation, and that was always given as his excuse last season for Juventus underperforming last season. Ah, oh, but you know they've got all this going on off the pitch. You know, they, you know this season there's, there's none of that. Um, they've got no European football. They're playing once a week. Uh, even this Atalanta t- team, they're playing against an Atalanta team that's exhausted. They've been playing non-stop. Um, and uh, and they, they've got one point less. So, I mean... It, it, well, you can't tell me that the football doesn't... that they don't look better on the pitch than they no, do last they don't. No, they, they don't. do. They absolutely do. They look better in terms of the attacking... Uh, and in terms of, of, of the of, of, of having an attacking identity, the patterns of play. Well, the they goals, the goals they're not... They're, they're, the, the attack is no better this season than it was last season. Because, so, there's, because the there's, and, again, the quality of the squad. I'm talking about the play. I'm not talking about how many goals you've conceded and how many goals you've scored. 
squad. I'm talking about actively watching the games. You can't tell me that Juventus aren't better this season than they were last season. It's a much more... It's, it's, it's a team. It's a much more cohesive unit. It's a team that actually looks much more mature than it did last season with pretty much the same same players. Now, is that good enough for Juve as a club? No. But there's also this notion of when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see Hollywood superstar or do you see the reality? Juventus are not a Scudetto winning side. They just aren't. What they are is a team in transition in a new project. That's fine, though. That's that's fine. And they have improved in terms of how they play on the pitch. I I, I, I disagree, Mm. and the vast majority of Juventus fans disagree that there's any improvement. There's no no style of football. The 28% possession against Napoli says it all about whether it's Juventus have improved. one game out of 20. It's not one play. There's, there's multiple games where they're, where they're, where they're completely dominated. The midfield is dominated virtually every game that they play, and that's down to the manager because, because Allegri is incapable of having a team that's able to control a game of football. And, that, I mean, the, the, the excuses are out now. You know, first, no excuse. First of all, it was the first season. Then it was all the stuff going off the pitch. This season, it's, it's, it's something else. The excuses are out. We're in the third season there is of Allegri. No excuses there, there, there's here. been this no improvement of points. Scudetto. With Allegri, it's always about oh, it's always about results. We told it's about results with Allegri. Mm. Well, the results are worse. So what is it about? Res- is it about results? Is it about improved play? Because there's neither. Because this squad isn't good neither, enough. Neither. You of can't it. make chicken soup with chicken poo, and this is chicken poo and it's old dry. now it's chicken poo chicken. six it's weeks ago been that. now it's chicken it's poo six been weeks that. ago I said they've was... overperformed all six the time week, six weeks ago I said they've overperformed well, six throughout weeks the ago consistent. you were saying that they, they were going to be five points ahead of Inter at the end of end of March no I did not say that I said they you could did. potentially <laughs> be that what I've had said throughout this entire season consistently from match day one till today is that Juvent- Allegri has this Juventus side overperforming you yourself literally said throughout the season that you that they are there are patterns of play there are I have never included. said that they're patterns of play. I've said it about okay. two or three times the whole season. I've said this. That's my entire point now that there are no patterns of play. There, but there, there, are, are, pa- there are patterns of play. There are there exceptions. Are play. There, are, there, there isn't, are Nima. There, Nima. Is, there is. Come on. Show me examples of Juventus building from the back in the same way that the same way that that, that Inter do with Inzaghi or the same. But way they don't play the same way. They don't. Like, they I don't just, do they it's, just it's get special. it out wide, cross the ball, do a long pass. That's that. They've got no patterns of play. They that's do the have patterns point. of play. It's just that they you don't like Show me them. Show me them, Nima. Show just me watch the game. Just what do you mean? Show me them. Look at that. Look at look at how Juventus scored the, the goal for Cambiasso. That's not yeah, patterns those of are play. exceptions. Those oh, are exceptions this season. On. Like it's it's nah. Come on. Nima, it's, the it's, excuse. The excuse. There is no out. excuse. There is no excuse. Allegri Juventus has been an unmitigated. 2023. Allegri's been Juventus an unmitigated. 23, 24. The squad is shit. It's not better than this. He has them overperforming. The fact that he was even in the discussions for a title race was a huge overperformance huge overperformance and that's just a fact that you're gonna have to accept weston mckinney has got nine assists that is an overperformance on who he is it's as simple as that like you i can understand that you're not happy with the results and that's a different thing altogether but you can't sit and tell me that allegri has done absolutely shit this season when it's evident for anyone who's watching he has less play, points than last better. season there's no improvement so? in him, man. he's, the, he's pe- getting paid nine million a year to underperform that's, him getting paid nine million was is, so, is irrelevant to the discussion that's again to do with with the with the board the previous board and and what they used to the paratici and all that nonsense right that's that's got to do with them i'm talking about that i can clearly see juventus improving on the pitch in terms of how they play and i look at the quality of the squad they haven't even strengthened with last season like compared to last season, how have the Juve improved qualitatively on the pitch? How? What players have they brought that's in? That, well, that's from, down to the manager improving. Again, it comes back to the same debate that we no, had. No, I'm talking about play, in come, terms of quality of the squad. Well, K- Vlaovic has improved. I think we can say Vlaovic has improved. For me, Vlaovic, Bremen has, been Vla- Vlaovic has improved based on... on his Gatti's under- been improved. Vla- well, Gatti, G- G- Gatti is, has improved from an E to a D. So uh, let's, let's no, not, he, let's uh, not let, you know, let's not, let's not over, over you know... It, what I'm, what we're, what I'm talking improved about. from last season to this. Again, Can from an, from, well. I mean, McKinney's improved from an E to a D. We're talking oh, about stop. players who are good enough for Juventus. This is not top. No, they're not good enough. That's exactly Tottenham. the this point. What you want him to do? Weston McKinney suddenly magically turn into Pirlo? Like, what, what do you want him to do? What do you want well, from I'll him? Well, I'll tell you what, it comes back to the debate that we had over 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 Inzaghi versus, versus, uh, versus Allegri and, and about... Well, how you 
you the 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 the, the how we view players, and I'm certainly not going to take Gatti and McKenney as example of those, but what Daniele Adani said about how you know you view Inter from two two three years ago, and then you look at players uh, like Makatarian, like Chalanoglu, and how Inzaghi has turned these players into players that you know people are considering as top top class players, like Cherby and others that were when he signed them. And then how you take the same players at Juventus, who now players that people are considering as, as not being as, as, as No, not I've being never thought enough. Juventus had a good squad for the, for the last two seasons. I, I think this this has been consistently my point, that I think that Juventus finishing in the top four on the pitch with this, with this team. Last season, the football was worse, was horrible. This season, the football has improved in both phases of play. But the problem is this team qualitatively isn't good enough and mentally it's not quite there. But if, I, if, if you nuance it, I do see improvement. I really do. Playing one. Remember that, they're playing. We've got to remember also they're playing once a season. They are fresh once a week. They're, you mean once? A, sorry, you wish week. they played once a season. Yeah, so I wish they, played once a season. they play well once a season, but yeah, they they, they play once a week, and they, they they should be they should be so super fresh, and that should be such a big advantage. If they were playing twice a week, goodness knows how how much even worse yeah. they would be doing this season. If they were doing to, to playing twice a week, and they're still doing worse than last season, playing one game. I mean. The excuses are out. There are no excuses. The excuses um, are out. You know, six, no we- six weeks ago, before this bad run of awful run of form started, you know, everybody, well, not everybody, because the, the, the people that know, know, but there was a lot of people that were saying, oh, Juventus are in the title race. Some people even they crazy. They were literally Some people even, definition in no, the title race. Title, when, you're le- when you're leading the no, league. At the, and yes, then, but I'm saying <laughs> that people, there were people saying that they, could, they were going to go on and win the title. They were actually realistically, laughably, saying they were realistically, realistically going to go on and win the title. Title. They were, and then they, and those that said that they weren't were saying that they've they've improved that Allegri was improving Juventus and that next season they would be ready to challenge for the Scudetto. I think next season with a proper Mercato for the first time in two years they will be ready to challenge for the Scudetto depending on who takes over. I don't not think with Allegri they be, won't <laughs> because well, that's the Allegri, whole that's the no, whole point that there's been zero no, they, improvement they under Allegri for three it's years. It's not true. It's simply not true. That there isn't. The points are there. The points are there in black and the, white. I've given you lots of points to, to, to counter that point and you just say no, 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 no because you don't like them. I mean, the, the, which, there has been improvement well, this season to the last. You're just not happy with the level of the improvement and that's fair. That, I, I, I'm not saying anything against that. You can be unhappy with, with the progress and, and the rate that it's going, but to say that it's been flat, that it's flatlined, is ridiculous. because well, the just points are there in black and white. Now. They've got one point less. How can you say there's been improvement? They've got because one the, point because, less. Because if you look at how Juventus have played this season compared to last season, you'd have to be blind not to concede that there has been improvement on the pitch. Maybe the results haven't improved, but you cannot sit here and tell me that the, the the play on the pitch in both phases of play hasn't improved this season to last. What we have, what we have, and also not to mention the mental growth of the team. They haven't scored. They have. They're not scoring more goals. The defense is pretty much similar level to to what it was last season as well. So I, I don't see if they, they they're not scoring more. They're not conceding less. Where's the improvement? Well, they're very, they are playing the, better. The, they are the playing, but it's, 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 there it's is not a feeling. Improvement. We're talking about facts no, it's not no, we are talking about facts. Watch how Juve plans. Don't sit here and tell me that Juve aren't playing better football this season. Well, that's, a, sub, that's a subjective thing. No, it's really playing not. better. That's, that's really your not. opinion. You well, know? That's not my opinion. It's well, it watch Juve play. No, that's your, you well, your opinion did, is Juve is playing better. My opinion is they're not. My there opinion was is nothing no there last season. Juve barely created anything. And and it was it was genuinely unwatchable. But this season, there is actual things there. You see movement. You see patterns of play. You see an identity. Nice. You see something that used to remind you of Juve, even though it's not at the level you wish it was, but there is something there. And to say that, well, no, nothing, nothing. I mean, that, that's just too simplistic for me. I think it, I, well, I really I'm talking think it's objectively. Objectively, no, it's objectively Juventus have less points. They're not improved. Their attack hasn't improved. The they have less hasn't improved. points. That's objective. That is an empirical and you've fact. got subjective. Where is you, no, is it your, subjective. your opinion is that they're better. No, my I opinion is they're not. That's your opinion. Week in, week out. That's, that's your that's opinion, Nima. That's not that's my opinion. It's but it is your opinion. Fact. My opinion is they Look haven't improved. And most they Juventus have improved. Fans, compared your Juve, opinion, though. Compared Juve, how they play and how they attack. And you're telling me that the players, individual players, haven't improved. That the players, that they, that they're not that they don't have a much they actually have an identity uh, no they don't have no identity that's the that's the problem they do they have no happy with where it is style they have no patterns of play at all of course they do they don't they They do that's the whole point i mean listen look everybody that's listened to this leave your opinions in the in the in the the comments whether you're a juventus fan or not Mm -hmm. juventus fan do you think 
Juventus have improved under Allegri. Do you think there's patterns of play? Do you think things yeah. have improved? Let's see what everybody else compared to last we, season. We, compared yeah. to last season, yeah, I think there has been. I think it's evident that there has, and there has been improvement on individual levels. If as there well. has been improvement, do from you Bremer, also, if there Gatti, has been improvement, do you think it's to, a, a, Locatelli, enough to Chiesa, Every single one of these players have improved. Chiesa Chiesa has been great. a disaster this season, Nima. He's been a total no. disaster. He's been a catastrophe. No, no, He's been no, a catastrophe, think... Nima. Oh, sorry, Vla- Vlaovic, not Kiesa. Vlaovic. Well, Vlaovic, Vlaovic has improved compared to last season and the That's season That's exactly last. what I've been yes. saying all along. But, I've been giving you examples he, of listen, players that have improved this season compared but to is last. he better than the Fiorentina of Vlaovic? No, he's not. Oh, stop. Nima, this is becoming not. a point where literally anything good with Allegri's Juve is countered by no. something else that okay. is completely do you, Okay, do you think this do you think this Vlaovic now, this season, is a better player than the Vlaovic that was at Fiorentina? Yes! I see a much, much more mature player no. than I saw at Fiorentina. No? It's a much more he's mature he's a better player. He's a better Vlaovic than last season and the season before, which was obviously terrible. There's no, no doubt I'm about seeing, that. No, I'm seeing a much more mature... And he's getting mature. back to the level that he should be, but he's not... But he's not I I've, don't see. I any... see a Vlaovic who is much more mature, much more complete off complete as a striker than he was two years ago. It doesn't mean that he's fully complete now. I'm saying that he, I, compared to when he came from Fiorentina, he was still very naive, a bit like ch- like a kid. Now, the, the, since joining Juve, it's been a difficult, very few difficult years, not just for him but for Juve as a whole. But this season, I. Definitely see an improvement on Vlaovic. I definitely the see only, an improvement the only on McKenny. Is, I the definitely only see an improvement player. on Locatelli, only, on Bremer. Locatelli on, on, zero improvement. Locatelli is no better. Be- Locatelli, is, Loc- Locatelli is completely the same player that he was at no, no, Completely. No. I'm sorry, no. Nima. That, that no. again. Those listening to listen, those listen to this podcast, no. answer these points. Do you think Locatelli is a better player now than he was at Sassuolo? No, he's no, a- no, no. I'm not talking about Sassuolo again. I'm talking about this this season compared to last. And of course, he's a better player than he was at Sassuolo. No, no, he's not. He's exactly. He hasn't improved at all from the Sassuolo play. He's exactly no. the same player. Is he? The, no, is, he is he any better than the, 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 the Locatelli that we saw at Euro 2020? In 2021, why are we not. comparing with Euro 2020 now? Where I'm comparing because that's Juve when Juventus signed no, him. Juventus no, signed compar- him that I'm summer. I'm comparing. I'm comparing Juve this season with last season, and I think that from Bremer to Danilo to McKenny to Locatelli to Vlaovic to Cambiaso, I see improvement from one season to the next. And I think I think it's it's ridiculous to claim that there isn't. I see a Juve that actually has an at- attacking identity, even though it's not fantastic in Joga Bonito but it is an attacking at- identity. I see a Juve with, 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 with mental growth of a Juve side that, that is starting to show that they are, they're, they're, they're building, there's something there now. After three years of absolute darkness and horror, I see something there. Now, w- w- translating that onto the pitch is different. That is the next step, and I don't think that Allegri is going to be there to do it, and I don't think he should be, because it's you can't have a situation where... One half of the fan base hates him, and the other fan, ha- half of the fan base it's more than one half. I can tell you, it's, it's no, whatever, third, half, quarter, yeah. whatever. But a so large stupid stream- ultras that put up that stupid banner that that, that seems to that seems to that yeah, seems well, to like whatever. Him. Okay, whatever, twenty percent, whatever. However you want to, but there's a sliver of, of of the Juventus fans that support him, and there's lots of Juventus fans that absolutely despise him, and you can't have this situation. No, you just can't. can't. It can't continue, and 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 I think that that's why he's going to leave, and and and, and that's my feeling as well. But regardless, if you Juventus are going to finish in the top four this season, I think it's obvious they are, and. Um, if they win a Coppa Italia, that is obvious improvement after an absolute disaster of last season. There was nothing there. I mean, the, the nuclear bomb went off at Juve year, year last year, and they're picking up the pieces. Now, if you expect Juve to, to, to come from that and start winning trophies and fight for the Scudetto until match day 38, I'm sorry, but your expectations no, I don't. are the I don't. I don't, and I, I've said that all along. I've said that when people were saying they could win the Scudetto this season, I was saying it's laughable to think that they could win the Scudetto. You know, I think, I, they're, I, I think they are doing exactly what can be But expected. I also think it's laughable, and I've said all along, that it's laughable that people see an improvement to the extent that they actually think Allegri, if he was there this season, could actually challenge for the Scudetto. Because, they're, again, there's no there's no. They improvement. did challenge for the Scudetto, objectively, until match day, whatever it was, 22, 23, So, so there are many teams. Aston league. Villa challenges for the Premier League in 97. 98 until Christmas, and then they finished 30 points behind. And you have teams that, that overperform for a while during the season, yeah. and they can't, and that's it up. what Juve did. That's what Juve did. They overperformed. Yeah, but I'm talking and about I'm talking about those that thought they could actually there. win the Scudetto this season.
season. It was laughable. And then, and then mm. I'm saying it's laughable. Anybody that thinks that that Allegri is improving the team and getting and improving the improving Juventus to a, to a, to to be actually be able to challenge for the Scudetto last season. There's no there's no improvement objectively in terms of points. In terms there of is the improvement on the pitch and how they play. And in, well, on an again, individual that's your level. opinion. Object- no, I'm that's talking objective. about facts. We cannot. It's not no, objective. That's about subjective. Facts. Objective is is it's black. Is, is, there's it no, is black and white. Bremer has improved this season to the last. Vlaovic has improved this season to the last. You can't tell me they haven't. These Wek McKenney has is having the season of his career since joining Juve. That is an objective fact. Yeah, but you Juventus. Can- you can't tell me that he, that's not true. Yeah, but you're picking out little examples of players here, Literally players there. That improve. Like I'm four, talking five, about overall. I'm talking that's about like overall. Six. There's no improvement in Juventus as a team. There's no improvement. That's what I'm saying. That's my opinion. Your opinion mm. is they haven't. But objectively... I'm, I'm saying that there is improvement. The objective facts are they've, not, they've got worse this season compared to last. That's no, the they haven't gotten worse. That's obje- no, but worse. I'm talking about objective facts. The points, no, you're talking about points. Points, the attack. The points, the number of... The points, the attack, the defence. There's no improvement. Those are objective facts. Then you can have your opinion if they've, they've improved. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the numbers on on the board, whether they be goals conceded, goals scored, or points. I'm talking about the the the, the football on the pitch, and the football on the pitch has improved. The problem is that it doesn't translate to points on the board and goals scored and goals conceded, and that is a problem. That is what needs to be addressed. But to basically look at this as a black and white simplistic thing and say, no, look, last season, no, no, same same shit, no difference. That's that's silly. Like, it's, it's not true. The problem is, it's just like with Inzaghi last season. In, Inter's Inzaghi played really, really well, but they could not kill off games, and therefore they lost 12 games as a result of it. That that If Inter were losing 12 games, but they weren't creating anything, there's a difference between that and what we saw last season when Inter were creating chances and missing sitters. That's the point I'm talking about. You have to look at the games. You can't just look at the numbers. Just, just, just look at the numbers and then do like this. And any idiot with with a pair of functioning eyeballs can just look at t- teletext, look at the standing, and say, "Oh, but I mean, yeah, come on." Well, no, that well, that's your opinion. My opinion is this season they were they were even when they were in the title race, they they were weren't playing well. They were they were winning one nils. They were winning games last season. Yeah, no, but this season as well, they were winning games with up until December. The, the attackers weren't scoring any goals. It was all all goals from headers from corners and mm. defenders and midfielders. I mean, you can see who scored the goals in 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 mm. in October. October, November, into December. Who was scoring? All the, you know, they were one nil wins, and and it was unsustainable, which is, is what I said all along. Is, it's unsustainable. My point is the Juventus are not the finished product. Juventus are not, and, and neither are Atalanta. They they're not. They they are projects in transition in year one or year two or whatever of their project with Juve. It's literally just six, seven, eight months old. I mean, when did Juntoli take over? So my point is simply that I think there is improvement on the pitch and how the teams play and in how Juventus is how Juventus behave. I see improvement in key players in the starting lineup in terms of how they're playing, uh, looking at the entirety of the season. And whether or not that's enough for Juve is a completely separate discussion. Whether or not Allegri should continue, completely separate discussion. But to claim that there is zero improvement on the pitch and on an individual level, I mean, that that's just, that's just, it's just not true. Then the, f- the problem is it's not translating to points. And that is a huge problem. And of course, the, the manager is to, is always the, the one to blame for that utter completely. But if we nuance it. The only positive we- that can come of this, and this, and Juventus are on a dreadful run of form, last seven games, one win, three draws, three loss, three losses. Um, the only positive to come of this is, as I said last week, is that the Juventus management surely, have to look at this and realise he's 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 you know it's there he's got to go now they they should be making decisions now planning for next season and this should should confirm to them that Allegri is not improving the team and and they have to hire their next manager now for next season and start building around what that new manager will will want. I think it's if, obvious. If it's Thiago Motta or or whoever else, whoever it may be. Um, whereas if Juventus had been, if Juventus had won these last seven games, maybe they might have made the the an, another decision and that would have been. A mistake. So I think this can be a positive if it actually leads to Juventus actually doing something about this and I, making the decision. Um, Juventus need I just to, hope they do. <laughs> no, the, Juventus need to to make a decision. Period. Like we're, it's not even about Allegri anymore. It's not even about. It's about what is you, this Juventus, this 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 new Juve. What is the identity of it in terms of what kind of football do we want to play? 
we know the 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 identity of the club and and how you behave and and and, and on the pitch and and all of that. But that's Allegri sorted all that. They're happy with him there. The question there is now: What do you want to do? What kind of football do you want to play? What, what do we want to continue with the Allegri style, or do we want to play a more progressive style, similar to what Milan and Juve, Milan and Inter and Napoli have done when they've had success? You brought in Juntoli. He was the architect behind the Napoli success. That, to me, is very indicative of where Juve want to go. So the, the, that that discussion has to be had regardless, and they've had to they had to make that decision, and they should they should do it quickly. And if they bring Thiago Motta in. They need to give him time. They need to give him two, three years to do something because, again, this squad is not good enough without improving it. Is my point? Yeah, I think there's there's there's, there's definitely there's definitely elements of the squad that are just not Juventus level. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> but on. at the same time, uh, it's also down to the the manager to improve these players, and that's one thing that Thiago Motta has done. I mean, he's taken players um, that you know a year ago you would not have thought are, are, are good enough to play even for even for Bologna and now he's turned them into players that are um, are uh, you know wanted by the biggest clubs in Europe like mm. Joshua Zixi like uh, Ricardo Calafiori you know these kind of players um, well, young. you know I mean we know and that's the, that's the whole out, point man. I'm making about Allegri is that this is what you know you can look at the manager and you can say <laughs> oh this player for Juventus is not good enough or this player for Juventus is not good enough well is that because they're actually not good enough or is that because the manager is is not able to improve them and develop them? Um, and that was the whole point that the, of the Daniele Adani uh, debate um, that we had a few weeks mm. ago about how Inzaghi two years ago was taking on players who actually many of them were considered not good enough for Inter and he's turned them into... Uh, among the best, and that's down to. But it's not fantastic. just Inzaghi. As much as I love Filippo C- C- Simone Inzaghi as a coach and as a tactician, and and you know I was pretty much the only person to 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 do that back in 2017. Since then, it is also the club as a whole. It is also the fact that Beppe Marotta is there, that P- Piero Osilio, that they've built the structure, that they understand what do what kind of football do we want to play, what kind of players do we need to bring into that and also respect financial parameters and not end up having SWAT teams barge in through the window. Okay. None of that has existed at Juve. None of it. And now you have Juntoli there and you're trying to do something along those lines. Um, and therefore that's what I take issue with, with this Allegri criticism. Um, it's one thing to criticize, but to just blame everything on him it's just well, no, they're not. Yeah, of course, absolutely. You can't blame everything on him. There's been lots of things done wrong. But when you're talking about player development, that's the coach. That's simply down on the coach and and and, and the coaching team around him. Absolutely, and the quality There's of no... the players available to the coach. No, I mean, well, yes, absolutely. But again, you it comes give, to, again, uh, the, the, Daniel Adani's point is, you know, Inzaghi was taking on players like Makatarian, like Acerbi, like Chalanoglu, and he's turned them into world beaters. You know, with with his work, with his fantastic work. On the training ground and developing these players in 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 read in well because the scouting them was into, done into... was was properly and the quality of those players with all due respect I think Chalanoglu and Mkhitaryan are better players than Weston McKenney and no but we're not talking what. about Weston McKenney we're talking about players like Locatelli we're talking about players like Chiesa like Vlaovic you know we're looking yeah, Chiesa at Chiesa was had an ACL I mean Inter have luckily Lo- I mean, I don't... we take Lo- Locatelli versus Chalanoglu in twenty twenty one there's no even debate. Which which player was 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 at a higher level, and which player mm-hmm. was 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 seen Absolutely. to have a bigger future, and um and 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 wanted by the big clubs and everything, and then and and then look at the way that these two developed. One is completely the same now, three years later, and one is now the maybe the best in his role. You know, that's just one mm-hmm. example. But you know, this is this is the whole thing that you know we're bringing in a Thiago Motta that maybe he can make some of these players. Maybe he can make. Locatelli become one of the best midfielders in the world, you know, like like Chalanoglu because he's mm. good at developing players. Well, whether I don't know, you know, so that's just an example. But that yeah. is why Juventus need to move now, and that's the positive of this bad run is that hopefully it can lead to bring uh, to making that decision now, um, rather than you know just papering. I think his job this season was to get Juve back into the Champions League and perhaps win a win, win a trophy in Coppa Italia. I think he's going to do both of those things. Um, but then I do agree that it's time to go move on because, again, the sporting director, Juntoli, suggests to me that they don't want to play the kind of football Allegri plays. And then when that is true, there's no point in continuing this. 
Mm. It's just well, an exercise. We let's move. We better move on ourselves. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just a quick note on on Atalanta. I think it's a big boost for them getting this draw because they've had a difficult spell with the with the Inter and Bologna uh, results, uh, and then they got the Sporting draw against Sporting Lisbon away uh, in the first leg of the last sixteen of the Europa League on uh, Wednesday, and they played really really well in that game. They should have won. They hit the post three times, and they were were really really good. And and then they come here and they, I mean, they were tired. You could see they were really tired. And, and that's my, my only concern going into the sporting second leg is that I hope they're not exhausted and that they can win that game. Um, but to get a draw here, um, I mean, always me- getting a draw at Juventus, however badly they're playing, however bad form they're in, is always... Is always it was impressive. Uh, what I, it, was, it is positive. And what I liked about Atalanta was... Um, the fact that they started to show a little bit of ruthlessness because in the first half, like we said, Juve were were in control, but Atalanta scored the first goal, um, and you know they and and then to come back after Juve hit them twice in five minutes to equalize as well. Now nah, he it, he they, they, they're for me Atalanta are a side that are rebuilding, but they're further ahead in their project. Um, and you, Atalanta, and it's good to see because we, you know, we were all charmed and fell in love with Atalanta a few years ago, of how they are a top side in the Serie A now, um, which is insane given that they're a small provincial club from uh, from Bergamo, um, and that they continue to get the most out of the players that they have available to them um, with 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 not that much investment, not not that high of a wage bill, um, and. You know, again, Cop Miners is the latest of this this conveyor belt of of fantastic players that that they they seem to be. Able yeah, to what produce. Gasparini Gasparini spoke about it after the game with Coop Miners, how he's developed him into a more advanced position from a more mm. deep lying player, yeah. and he even Which said I think he's played right as a centre back in in Holland a little bit, uh, yeah. and to a goal scoring midfielder now. With, with yeah. you know, I think that's his tenth this season, no. not ninth or tenth this season. He's got no. two good two. Yes, say the gr- great. First goal, although it was horrific defending from Juventus, um, mm. but it was really well worked on the training ground. And he's got a great left foot shot. Uh, he does takes free kicks as well. And Manchester United scouts are actually there watching him. Oh God, as, please as, as don't well. don't go to Manchester United. Like I, I think it. again, I think he's now going to be outpriced out of a out mm. of a Serie A move now. So That's I think it's, we're looking at sixty million now. And yeah. is any and Serie they, A club? This is a club that knows how to sell. <laughs> Let's put it to you that way. Uh, Do you see an Italian club site paying sixty million for him? Nah, nah. But we—that's th- what I mean. I mean, Atalanta know how to sell players. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they—they're going to charge. They're going to milk that cow. So yeah, I, I think you're right. I think it would take no no Serie A club is paying sixty million for him. Like, you just don't see that happening. Um, to be honest, no, no. Exactly. But I just don't. Ho- I just don't hope you got going. We've seen so how many players now we've seen go to Man United and just. Die. <laughs> Die. I mean, it's, it's literally become career suicide a move to Man United. Yeah. And it feels weird to say that, mm. um, given that you and I grew up with... No, no Bremer's been linked. Bremer's somebody they're looking at as well. And they were actually scouting him in the same game. Um, mm. And uh, I would say the same thing to Bremer. Just, just, yeah, just, don't. Yeah, don't. Just, just think carefully if you are. Yes, yeah, exactly. If you, if you are. Uh, Have a long And also they'll play a back four, which I think is a gamble as well for Man United. Bremer well. in the back four is no. Yeah, he's he's well. He's not proven. I don't see why he couldn't play in the back four. But yeah, I, I think it's uh, you know he's not going to just slot in there, is he? So no, that, he's not. That's the mm. that's, that's the thing. Schemacher as well. I thought he had after a really great game against Sporting yeah. in 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 uh, midweek. I thought he had some positives in this Me first too. half. Not so good, but second half I thought he um, he had a decent chance at one nil. But then he had a really great long shot. He, he one thing we know about Schemacher is. He's one of the best with his shots from outside mm-hmm. the area. He really is. He forced yeah. Chesney into a into a good save, and um, but he also trapped back at one stage to make a crucial challenge on Moretti, yeah. um, which is the first, maybe the first time ever. Um, but so that's fantastic. Maybe he's listening to, to Gasparini. That's yeah. what, it's exactly what I was going to say. That's fantastic news, isn't it? Because that means that whatever Gasparini's doing, even though we we from the outside are very critical of it, well, if it's working, then. Who are we to knock it? Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's if it works, if it ain't broke, why fix it? And and if Gasparini's way of communicating, albeit 
I mean, you call Allegri a dinosaur, then I don't, I don't know what to call Gasperini. If if Allegri is a dinosaur and how he how he is, then Gasperini is the Big Bang. That's how, how is Gasperini the Big Bang though? I mean, have you plays, seen him? He plays talk modern football. He, he play. plays modern football, but have you seen how he treats other human beings? Okay, how he talks to them. He's a dinosaur, <laughs> maybe as as a man manager, maybe. Say that. <laughs> That's not, what I'm not, saying. Not like if if, if, if Allegri is a dinosaur, then this guy is like he predates that. He predates time, like <laughs> time itself, but. Again, who cares Cave if man. it works? <laughs> yeah, well, not even that. I mean, we're talking like the, the, the single cells in the water after the Big Bang. Like, <laughs> that's the level we're at. Um, bacteria, bacterial level of, of, of prehistoric level of communication. But, um, but again, who cares if it's working? And if Scamacca is responding to it, then more power to Gasperini. Who cares? I mean, if it works, to be honest. Mm. Um, and, and if he's improving Skamaka and he can unlock him and get him get inside his head and push him to be a better player and, and to unlock the incredible potential that we all know that Skamaka has, because time is running out for him. He's not getting any younger and he's not a young player. It's only in Italy where your 25-year-old is young. But elsewhere, he this isn't when he should be hitting his prime. And, and if Gasparini can get the most out of him, more power to Gasparini. Who cares what anyone thinks, to be honest? Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, let's move on to Fiorentina Roma. Another two-two. Another really well. This, this was a this was a fantastic game for neutral. Um, I really enjoyed it, especially well the second half, especially. Um, if, if we talk this from the Fiorentina point of view first, I think Fiorentina aren't going to be gutted. I mean, Vincenzo Italiano admitted as much at the end of the game. Uh, the first half, Fiorentina were, were completely dominant. And they could have been three up by 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 half time. They were first to every ball. They wanted it more. Um, second half, of course, Roma will come to Roma in a bit. They changed tactically and, 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 they, and they were much improved. Um, but then Fiorentina showed a good reaction to the, the Roma equaliser. They went 2-1 up. And then this is where the regrets come in. They had the penalty to end the game uh, in the last 10 minutes. Biragi steps up and misses. Uh, and then they concede with a, basically the last kick of the game to draw 2-2. And Fiorentina would have been back in the Champions League race. Mm-hmm. They would have been only two points off Atalanta yeah. and Roma in fifth yeah. with a with a win. And now I think we can probably kiss goodbye to yeah. it now. Um, and it's a lot of... It's, there's got to be a lot of regrets for Fiorentina because they were so good in the first half. I know Ro- Roma were part of the reason for that and we'll come to that. But this was there for the taking. And penalties again, Nima, they miss mm. Fiorentina and penalties... <laughs> they like they're like England with penalties. They, they just they can, and not oh, Napoli with penalties. I mean, yeah, like, Osiman, I mean, Osiman and Lautaro with penalties. Yeah, I mean yes. whether it's Nico Gonzalez, whether it's Biragi, whether it's I mean I saw some people saying Belotti should take the penalties. No, no, he's not no you penalties. don't want Belotti taking not, the penalties either. Penalties. Um, like, the they've got to sort out their penalties because no, they need they need to have a proper penalty taker, someone who can you know who's who's secure because right now you don't feel. You don't feel secure when Fiorentina get a penalty. You feel like, oh, actually, actually, they, <laughs> they, do you know what I mean? And, and, and goalkeepers feel that way too when they go up against them, because you can tell that it's not like when when he, when when any other side gets a penalty and you know someone you know like Chalanoglu stepping up, you know that there's a ninety five percent chance he's scoring that. With Fiorentina, it's not. Same thing with Napoli and Lautaro. It's, it feels like it's fifty fifty, and and that's not that's not how it should be. Um, and, and at this level, when you get these chances, you, you have to bury them. But I feel like it's Groundhog Day with Vincenzo Italiano and 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 uh, Fiorentina. It's just it's we we keep saying this round and round and round and round and round, round we go about Fiorentina creating chances. It looks good on the ball. They look good on the ball. The passing is great. The movement looks nice. But it just doesn't translate to to goal scored. Um, and the the striker issue that they've had. Mm. since Vlaovic left, which is pretty to much... To be honest with you, though, I thought Belotti was really, really good in this game. And, and He is good, and but that's because Belotti's a hard worker. I, he, I he thought he was excellent. Moving. I thought he was he was really putting himself around. He was he causing does. him all kinds of trouble. I mean, he got the assist. He won the penalty. Uh, I mean, he made a meal of it. And we know Belotti's one of the biggest divers in football, <laughs> but, but, but he was still a penalty, like, by the letter of the law. Yeah. It was still a penalty. It was stupidity from Paredes, but, yeah. but then they miss it. Um, and I mean, I think Fiorentina should feel a groove that actually should have been a second yellow as well by the letter mm. of the law. You know, mm. I know he made a meal of it, but you pull a player's shirt like that blatantly and deliberately. Yeah, uh, it's got to be. A, it's got to be a yellow second yellow. So I think Fiorentina can feel a groove with that. Um, 
But there's positives to take from it. It showed again that Fiorentina, although both of us think that they're they're not they're not as good as last season, I think in terms of quality of players available and and um, you know I don't think they had. I mean, Pallade, I think, is the most overrated transfer chief in, in Italy and had a bad, he's number so bad summer bad. market. I don't think he's constructed a very, you know, a, they've downgraded, I think, this season. I think mm. this game, though, showed that they can still compete against the against the, the bigger teams. And I think they've had but a good game. not just that. This. Look at how, how they've spent the Vlaovic and Chiesa money mm. and what they've spent it on. It's, it's not good enough, especially in the attacking department. Nico Gonzalez, apart... If we take him away, I mean, Artur Cabral, flop. Luka Jovic, flop. Although he didn't cost them a lot. But you know what I mean? No, like, all the strikers have been... Jonathan Iconet, flop. Yeah. Like, it's just been flop Unzola, after flop after yeah. Unzola. Beltran, okay, let's give him the benefit well, of the doubt. Give him away. a bit of time. But yeah, he's yeah. not really done it either. But I mean, but, 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 but on the other hand, I mean, the midfield looks good. Um, I think again, like the, the football they play is, is it's a progressive football. It's mm. the, they're, they're hollow defensively, yeah. and they make. But, I mean, the positive to take from this is: look, they're in a good position in the Europa League. They won four uh, three, and you, you mean know, Conference League? Yeah, in the sorry, in the Conference League, they're in a good position. They're going to go through, and um, and uh, you know, I hope playing like this, yeah. they they definitely got. Um, They've got a chance because I would have put Aston Villa as the favourites to win the tournament, yeah. but Aston Villa, I've been watching a lot of them recently. They're starting to, to decline. They're, they're yeah. starting to decline now towards the end of the season. They're starting to run out of steam um, a little bit. They're fighting for that Champions League place, so maybe it's not the Aston Villa of the first half of the season, which mm. means Fiorentina maybe have more of a chance against Villa than I would have given them, you know, earlier in the season. So they've got a chance in that Conference League as well. And I think this game can if they try and take the positives out of this game as, as disappointing as they will be they can take from this that they can compete against the bigger teams. Mm. Having said why, that though, Nima, mm. we have to say that there is a reason why Fiorentina uh, dominated that first half so much. And we have, and we're going to talk about De Rossi now, we have been so, I mean, he's been done such an amazing, amazing job for Roma since he's come on. It's been incredible. But we have to criticise him for the, for the first half. He got it wrong. I mean, he admitted it in the, uh, after the game. He got it completely wrong. He went to a back three. Um, it didn't work at all. I thought it was a strange decision to play with a back three, given how how they were in such excellent form, playing in a four and one four nil against Brighton. I thought it was strange playing Angelino uh, at right back. Um, maybe he needed a bit more rotation as well, because they they did look a bit tired um, as well. Maybe he just overthought it, but you know he got it wrong, um, De Rossi, from the start in this game, and almost cost him the game because of it. I think there was always going to be a be a reaction to that unbelievable game uh, against Brighton uh, midweek where Daniele De Rossi tactically mopped the floor with Roberto De Zerbi from minute one to minute 90. Um, And Roma were just fantastic. There's no other word to describe that Roma side. The thing with Daniele De Rossi is that he is this, you know, he's he's going to make he's not the finished product again he's going to make mistakes like this he's going to he's going to learn on the job at roma the question is should roma keep him and and is he is he a right horse to bet on to allow him to learn on the job and 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 then you and when he does he will make mistakes like he did against fiorentina in the first half where he gifted it away but the counterpoint to that is well does he recover and how well does he recover in that same game? Well, I thought Roma were really good in the second half. I thought Roma recovered really well. I thought Roma showed showed character um, and and belief, and they and 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 reacted the way that you expect Roma to react. A club like Roma of Roma stature to react in a game like that, and that I think is also down to Daniele De Rossi, which brings me to the next point, and that is that. I watched Daniele De Rossi at Spal. It was atrocious. It was genuinely atrocious. It was unwatchable. I remember we had Joe Tacopina on uh, after uh, he was sacked at Spal. And he said, I listened to the back to that interview and people should check it out, we, which we did. And, and he said that 
Daniele De Rossi, I have no, I had no, he said, I have no doubts in my mind that Daniele De Rossi is going to be a fantastic world class manager. There's no doubt. The football he tried to play at Spal, we don't have the players for. And I was thinking at the time, you know, is Joe being a little bit too nice to his friend and, and all of that? But to be honest, no, I don't think he was. I think he was 100% honest and accurate and spot on. What we've seen from Daniele De Rossi since he took over from Jose Mourinho is not good vibes. It's not um, a manager that loves the club and the club loves him and he's a club icon and he's come in there and he's getting everyone to be a grinta merchant like Gattuso at Milan. No, what we have is a very talented ta- Italian young tactician. And I want to do a mea culpa on that. I did not in a million years see Daniele De Rossi, the ability that Daniele De Rossi has and has shown since taking over Roma from Jose Mourinho because there was no, no evidence to suggest that. What he's done since taking over Roma, the, the, the identity, the movement, the patterns of play, the tactical the giocate, if you will, the plays, is that of one of the most talented and exciting Italian coaches that are available out there. And I sincerely hope from the bottom of my heart that Daniele De Rossi stays at Roma. I really do. I can't think of anyone better with the budget that they have that would be able to take over Roma and also attract players to come to Roma like mm, Daniele That's De a very good point. That's and, a very good point, yeah. And the, the football they play, just look at that first and fourth goal against Brighton. That is, that's not, that is fantastic. That's what we would call patterns play. of play. No? That's <laughs> patterns of play. That, to get, I mean, the movement of that team, if you look at the entire movement, the way that the everyone in the in, in the team, the way that the defenders move out, the way that the, the midfield drops deep, the inversion of the attackers centrally from from centrally out wide and then in the precise right moment when that ball from Paredes comes Dybala's run in the the fourth goal the way that they play out from the back the triangles okay it's the Zerbi he doesn't know how to defend he, he concedes space his press is sometimes not very cohesive but it doesn't matter there's an, that's 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 an identity of a club that knows how it wants to play football um and and that is all on Daniele De Rossi, all of it. And also, if I can just add Daniele. add to that, and that is the biggest um, positive about about this last minute last well, last minute of injury time, last kick, um, the equaliser against uh, Fiorentina is that this shows that um, you know that there is he's brought back this. Well, I don't want to say he's brought back the spirit because actually, if there's one thing about Jose Mourinho um, is that. They had a never say die attitude. This this Roman team. I mean, they had no, yeah. they had no no foot. They didn't play football. They had they were they played outdated football. But mm. when it got to the last five minutes, it got to injury time. Roma were, were would fight and they would they would score late goals and 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 they would they would you know they they fought and he he was great at that Mourinho. So, but that hasn't been lost. He he's kept no. that as well uh, as well. So that that's the one thing that they haven't even lost from from Mourinho. Um, um, which is which is fantastic. Which is incredible. He's kept that. He's kept the organization. He's kept the structure. The spirit. But what he has, and then the spirit and the character. But what he has done is unleash Dybala, Pellegrini, Lukaku, Spinazzola, um, El Sharawi, all this attacking talent that Roma have. He's unleashed. I'll tell you what, if you can rehabilitate Hussein Moua, who scored, who scored yeah. then, I mean, just give him give him the keys to the city. I mean... No, you know. but it's it's truly, truly beautiful to see. Like, the football yeah. he plays is truly wonderful to that see. That brings I mean, me on he, nicely, though, to your point about how he was really, really bad at Spal. Um, that, um, to the discussion of Deserbi, because I think it's an interesting point, because I think that sometimes there are managers whose style of, styles of play are more suitable to, let's say, bigger clubs. Like, you can't play the, the same kind of football that you want to play with with really great players, with passing players, with big players, big clubs, that you want to play with, a let's say, a Serie B or Serie C team. So maybe that is where De Rossi went wrong. And that brings me on nicely to De Zerbi because 
you know, Deserby, there's no doubt about it. I mean, everybody that, that works with him or has worked with him, and De Rossi said it himself, they, you know, they call him, he's been called a genius so many times. Um, and there's no doubt about it, what he's done with Brighton, he's overperformed massively to, to get them into Europe for the first time in their history. Mm. Uh, and again, they're challenging for Europe again this se- this season. Um, but, you know, you've always been, you've been one of the pe- one of those who has been very critical about him from a defensive point of view. And this game, I have to say, I did think about you uh, uh, during this game because for me, this game, it was it was too much. The defensive the defensive weaknesses were were too <clears throat> were too much in this game. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna defend him a bit in in a while it, to come back on this, but I am gonna concede that this was unacceptable. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna take try and not take too much away from Roma because it was great, but it was too easy. It's not acceptable. Far too easy. It was not Far acceptable in this game that you get through the first press and then you're basically through on goal. I mean, that's that is not acceptable. Um, and but I think this is where. This is what Zerbi needs to needs to accept that that's not acceptable, and I think he's still but, refusing to accept that. Well, that's exactly it, and that's why I I've been pondering on this for quite some time, and I'm kind of still on the fence, but I'm leaning towards Roberto De Zerbi is not the Italian Pep Guardiola. Roberto De Zerbi seems to be the Italian Zdenek Zeman, and that's not a derogatory thing. I'm saying I'm not saying it as a slander. Absolutely not, because Zdenek Zeman, Italian football, should probably erect a statue in Zdenek Zeman's honour for the talent, the attacking talent, Italian talent that he has unleashed. Between from Francesco Totti to Lorenzo Insigne, <laughs> that, that's the span of career we're talking about. That's what Zdenek Zeman has done. And what I mean by is he the Italian Zdenek Zeman is exactly that. All I feel in football generally, there's this thing where Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Pep Guardiola, these are now, that's the, that's the standard, when in fact these are the fantastic, overachieving greats. We can't have the lowest bar for a player to be Ronaldo and Messi. We can't have the lowest bar of acceptance for a coach to be Pep Guardiola. That's insane. They are not the average. They are not normal in their fields. They are over uh, normal. They are unbelievable. They're legends of the game. De Zerbi, I think we should remember here that maybe this is his role in football. Maybe his role in football is to develop and unearth fantastic talent and allow players to to take the next step. If he's going to, which because he needs to be happy, you can't get someone like the Zerbi. You can't force Denik Zeman to play defensive football because it doesn't look good, and it, and it just he's not happy with it. The players won't be happy. It just it just becomes wrong. Same thing with the Zerbi. To build on your point, if he doesn't want to do that, that's fine. That doesn't mean that he can't have a good career. That doesn't mean that he he can't his role in football can't be that of someone who develops fantastic talent that, that creates that is a visionary in terms of attacking football that, that produces plays that are genius. Like mm. that's fine. But we, but this notion of him becoming the new Pep Guardiola, wait, well, just finish. Um, but, but, but to compare him with Pep Guardiola and all that, I think that's silly. Let him be the Zerbi. If that means that he can understand that you also sometimes have to defend and not be carved wide open. Great. If it doesn't mean that, let him just have that career. I don't see anything wrong with that, if that makes sense. I, th- I, I think there's two points here from me. One is that clearly in this game, and, and we've seen it in other games as well, of course, that you, it's not acceptable. It's like I said before, it's not yeah. acceptable to, to be able to, to play through you uh, so easily as Roma did in, in this game. You get through the first press and then all of a sudden you're, you're four on two at the back. I mean, it's just that's just not acceptable. The question for me is, well, two points. One, the question will be answered once he goes to a big club, and he will go to a big club. Is it because Brighton are, is part of the reason why it's so easy to play through this Brighton team like Roma did? Is it because Brighton are just not a very good, don't have the players yeah. to be able to 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 carry out what 
Does that, and this is where I come back to the Rossi spell point. Is it because the players are just not good enough to carry out the very, uh, and it's very kind of advanced, high risk, high reward style of football that De Rossi, the Zerbi plays with the high press and the, the, the trying to push up the field. Is it that the Brighton players are not good enough that that is why, from a defensive point of view, it fails so spectacular, spectacularly defensively when it does fail, like it did in this Roman game? Is it because of the Brighton players and that when he goes to a Man City or a Liverpool or, or, you know, one, or, or Real Madrid that the players will be so good that they'll be able to carry this out and, and they won't get, you know, found out? Is 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 that will that happen? We won't know until 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 he coaches those teams. I mean, I would say on that point that I've said it all along. The Brighton team this season, not last season, but the Brighton team this season on paper, I have them around 16th or 17th best team in the Premier League on paper. They're not. I mean, they're obviously like Luton, Burnley, and and uh, and Sheffield United are like a, they're all championship teams basically but after that I have them about 16th or 17th but on, we also have on to paper. remember I mean how many again I hate to be a prem face this is the kind of thing that prem faces do but in Martin Samuel Voigt in Sam, Martin Samuel Voigt <laughs> how many how many how many Brighton players would get in a Roma team oh, I mean no, honestly no. though how many would get into no, the Brighton team I would one. probably not honestly I'd one. probably pick one Mitoma who was injured anyway didn't miss yeah, and they did have exactly. a lot of players injured for this game I'd, Mitoma instead of El Shirawi would probably be the only player from the Brighton team that would get in the Roma team then on paper this is a, this is really a bad Brighton man he is overperforming massively to get this team into Europe for the first time in their history and to and to so he is he's doing an incredible job from that point of view um, but so that is number one. And then number two, if the answer to that question is no, which I think he do, I think there is, there is definitely a, uh, um, there's definitely a, a flaw there. There's no doubt about that. Yes. Better players would, would mask that flaw more, but I still think there's, there's clearly still a flaw there is, is he prepared? And if he is prepared, is he capable of correcting that flaw? at the big club. And these are the two questions that need to be answered. Mm. And if the, if the answers are positive answers, then he's going to be one of the greatest coaches of his generation. If they're negative, then the, then he, maybe he is more going to become more of a Zeman than a, than, than a, but so, my point is simply that that's fine. That's okay. It doesn't make, I don't, I don't think it makes him any lesser of a I coach. I think it would be a shame though, because we can see that from an attacking point of view, he has something very, very special. Um, and I think it would be a shame if he's not able to, to, to you know, to sort out that this clear, and I think there's definitely clearly a flaw there, and I think everybody's realizing it now that there is a flaw. Uh, it's been obvious for it's been staring everyone in the face, but everyone's been blown away by. But the, people also the need to be score. people also need to be realistic. Like, what do you expect from Brighton? Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, but no other. Thing, let's though. be honest. No other manager. I don't think any other manager. I mean, how many other managers would be able to get this Brighton, who are like I said, about sixteenth or seventeenth mm. on paper, to qualify for Europe? I mean, it's incredible what he's done. So people need to be realistic. What do we expect Brighton to do? Brighton shouldn't be competing really with Roma, to be honest with you. No, they shouldn't. Um, they shouldn't be losing 4-0. Uh, and in fact, to be well, fair, I think 4-0 was a bit of a, an exaggeration. I think, I mean, Brighton actually had quite a few chances. Yeah, they did. Probably should have been about a 4-2 game, really. And also, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I mean, I talk about anti-Italian discrimination, but that third goal, I mean, I don't know what's going on with that offside. <laughs> But, it wasn't but, uh, offside. They showed it. It was he was onside. No, well, there's 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 yeah. there's a lot. Well, the, the, if you look at the if you look at the, they didn't use the technology that they usually use. They but, they do it for every goal. Not like in Europe. Single- they don't have the they don't have the same technology. They don't have the the the, the proper technology in in Europe to show the, the two lines. It looked. There's a big debate over whether that was actually was actually uh, offside for that goal. Uh, and looking at it, I would. I'm not. You know. <laughs> I don't want to admit. I don't. Want, I didn't. It didn't matter in the end. I don't think because I think Roma were were so much better. But but um, but yeah. Look, I think it was a little bit harsh the result uh, as well. Uh, but anyway, the point is. I'm pretty sure they used the semi automatic No, they don't. Not in Europe. In, they don't. In, not in the Europa in League. Europe. Okay. They don't. They don't. I think mm. Brighton have actually put in an official complaint about it, along with, and we'll come to that on the Badger of the Week, along with something else from the game, which was <laughs> <laughs> my favourite moment of the week from the game. Um, Milan Empoli, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to zoom through the other games uh, quickly. We're already over an hour, um, so Milan Empoli, uh, not a great game. This Milan win one nil. Pulisic with the goal. He's uh, having a good season actually in terms of numbers in Serie A. 
a heavily deflected goal. Positives for me, two positives. Okafor's performance, uh, he got the assist. Um, I think he, he showed uh, showed himself to be pretty lively on that left-hand side, filling in for Liao. Five goals, two assists this season. He's only had four starts. He's contributing a goal, or has, having a goal contribution every 100 minutes. Um, I think, uh, you know, if he can just have a few less injuries, I think he's um, proved to be actually quite a successful signing in the end, uh, Okafor Nimmer. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I I think he is. I think he, if we can stay fit, that's the key. Can mm. we keep him fit? Um, but but he's an exciting player, and he's he's very dynamic, and he's difficult to mark, and mm. you know he's a technical player, and yeah, yeah. So it, that, that's that's that, that's the key. Benasser, but, I think, is the other positive. Milan is such more control team, yeah, more compact team. Player. When he plays, they just you know we talk about. You know, Deservey being open, but Milan have been similarly so open this season, so easy to play through once you get through that first line uh, and not having anyone protect the defence from the midfield. And when Benacer plays, that defence is protected so much more. Because he has one of some of the one of the highest football IQs in all of the mm. Serie A, Ismail Benacer. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's such an I hope he plays player. against Spar- Slavia Prague because that, they need to be a little bit careful. I did not like Milan's performance against Slavia well, Prague. I, I like thought they were really poor. They were lucky. Leao scored a magical goal, though. He did, <laughs> was... but they were lucky they got that Jesus. red card because, I mean, it was a red card, yeah. but if they hadn't had that red card, I'm not yeah. even sure Milan would have won that game the way they were playing. Mm. They, they were really no, They bad. weren't good in that game. They weren't no. good in, in so the I want Benacer has to play against Slavia Prague just to make sure they're protected for the onslaught that's going to come in, uh, in Czechia. Um, but I just got to say about Pulisic, I'm I'm very you know as I said before the season I think he's going to that he I predicted that he was going to be the first American player to to succeed in one of the classic Italian European clubs, and I think he's he's kind of done that already. I think he's going to be a star if he's not already at Milan. He's going to be a star at Milan. I think the fact that he just always scores for them. Um, it's not the most beautiful goals, but who cares? He all he's, he continues to deliver week on week for Milan when they need him. Um, that was a very intelligent signing, um, and I think Milan are going to enjoy him. Um, yeah, he's had, he had a lot. really good week, didn't he? Because he he he, uh, he scored in the Europa League, didn't he? Did he yeah. score? Did he score against Slavia? So, yeah. yeah, and then he scored this. So he's he's had a very he's had a very very good week, and he's certainly uh, uh, somebody that yeah. He um, yeah in terms of numbers, is is is, is producing. Um, let's move on to Inter, whose numbers are absolutely insane. Uh, they keep up their incredible 100% record in 2024, 13 wins in a row. And I saw one, of the, I don't know what, what newspaper it was, did it, but it was a great, great headline that said, um, even when Inter don't want to win, they still win. Because, <laughs> and I thought that really summed up this game so, so well. It's like they didn't even really care about winning. They just wanted to go in put in a kind of a, a really good defensive performance. And if they got a draw, they would have been happy with it. But they come away with another win. I mean, 13 but wins in a row. This is, this is, um, that game to me was one of the more enjoyable ones I've seen from into this season for, for a couple of reasons. The first one is they rotated, but, and they showed in the opening 20, 25 minutes that they were going to attack. And boy, did they attack. And they did everything they usually do when attacking the positional changes, the the wide players going becoming wingers, the 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 the, the wing the full backs becoming wing backs, you know, all of the usual Inzaghi dance of position, positional changes of players, midfielders becoming defenders, defenders becoming number tens. I mean, all, all of the stuff that we've seen all season with, with Inter, right? And from left centre back to right centre back is where, where the goal came from as well. All of that we saw for the opening 20, 25 minutes. And they put Bologna into, into some, some problems. Um, or a bit, you know, and then they scored. But for me, was the second half when Inter decided that they were not going to attack, they were going to defend. And that this was going to be a game where they simply gave possession to Bologna. A Bologna team was very well coached, very well drilled play good attacking football, have very interesting attacking patterns of play and and giocate and plays, but did not create a goddamn chance. The only thing Bologna created came from an Aslani headless pass right down the middle, which is something he needs to improve, even though I think Aslani has improved week on week on week, and I think that's a positive thing. 
He needs to get that cut nonsense like that out of his game when he plays the ball straight into the middle of the park where two, three Bologna players <clears throat> are, you know, put the pressure on and, and, and Zirkse, you know, scuffs the chance right at Sommer. But other than that, yeah, I mean, Bologna, the defense, didn't create, defense Bologna, didn't create, Bologna did not create anything. Inzaghi nullified via defensive football. He played Allegri ball. Uh, in the second half, Inter did not even cross the line. They didn't have; they had zero point zero xg, zero shots on target, zero shots off target, nothing. And that was a clear decision by Inter. It's a dress rehearsal for Atletico Madrid because that's how it's going to look. Now, obviously, Atletico Madrid are a much better side than than Bologna, but for the first time, look if because we know that Inter can attack in a wide variety of ways, very very versatile in attack. But if they can start playing on command defensive football as secure and like that and give defensive solid performances like they did against Bologna on command that's not the home that's the hallmark of a campione that's the hallmark of a team that can actually win the Champions League this is the first time this season I've said it other people have been like all excited I've been very skeptical but if they're going to play if they're going to master that in their toolbox as well then yes. No, they're Inter such a complete side. team they've got so much depth I mean Bissek is sixth choice centre back he scores the goal uh, and the, the defence, like you said, um, I mean, 13 goals conceded in 28 games. That's just outrageous. 17 clean sheets in the Serie A for Jan Sommer. The record is at 21, shared by Cudicini and Ross, Sebastiano Rossi at Milan, twice by Buffon at Juve, once by Providel in yeah, Sarri's first season, it. and once by the Morgan de Sanctis at Roma, so in 13-14 season. So... There is a good chance that Jan Sommer breaks. He's going to break it. There's ten games left. He's going to um, break it. There's there's a there's a chance left. I mean, Inter have you know have eighteen clean sheets. One was Aldero, but seventeen Jan Sommer. So, yeah, there's a good chance that he breaks it. But for me, also, when you're talking about the defense, this Jan, uh, this Bisek kid, <laughs> where did they find him? What a piece of scouting! It's you know he's still rough but he's a diamond in the rough. And what's so impressive about him, in my opinion, is that he makes still makes stupid, you know, you know, immature mistakes on the pitch tactically and gets the game wrong and, and positionally, but he immediately makes up for it because he's so quick and he's also very reactive. And I mean, if you're going to have this guy, I really think the future should be Bastoni, Bisek, Pavard, because he's also very good ball playing center, uh, the defender. And aerially, he's strong. He is strong. That should be Inter's... I want to see that back three. I think that could be a classic back three for Inter. Bastoni, Bisek, Pavard. For Inzaghi, that is, in this system. Um, He was... I'm I'm really, really blown away by him. No, it's, it's just... It's the first time I really feel, like I said... Inter are complete, and if they if they are for me complete teams, they win the biggest trophies, not just at Serie A level, but at international level. And if Inter can marry all of these aspects into their identity and do it on command, then they they are a genuine challenger to win the Champions League. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th- I think so too. Uh, Bologna, no panic. I mean, look, they have a great run of fixtures now. Uh, I mean, Napoli only drew. Roma only drew. Um, you know, Atalanta drew. So that they've, they've got rid of a what their tough game. And now they have Empoli, Salernitana, Frosinone and Monza in the next four games. And they play Roma. Yeah. Then, then they've got Udinese. I mean, they've got a great run of fixtures now between now and the end of the season. They've got no Europe. It's Bologna's to lose, as we said. As we said last week, they're they're in such a great position. And Napoli, but they do have Roma and Napoli and Juve left to play. We should remember. Well, that. they do, but they they can be by then. They can be the next four fixtures. They can they can be yeah. pretty much. Yeah, if they win the, the next four fixtures and take twelve points, that brings them up to sixty three. I think that almost. Yeah, they're almost there. Yeah, they're almost there. Especially with a fifth spot being enough to mm. to get to the Champions. Na- League. Napoli uh, blow it though. I mean, they big blow for their Champions League chances. Uh, they only draw with 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 Torino. And that's a, that's a big, big mistake from, from Napoli. They, they had to win um, that. Um, so it's all down to the Champions League now. Um, the, the positives are that I'm still insistent watching them. that They are improving. The improvement's probably not going to be enough. There's not enough time maybe for this improvement to rescue their season. Um, it's going to be difficult because um, they just can't afford draws, really. They just have to keep winning, really. 
Um, but they are improving. I'm certain that they're improving. Their possession, the triangles, the, the philosophy of play, um, you know, they, they are improved. They're maybe not still not creating enough chances, which is why they've drawn three of the five games. But I'm certain they are improving. And one player that is definitely improving is Kvada. Mm. This performance is one of the best individual performances of Serie A this season. He was unbelievable. He had, unbelievable. Eight, he had eight shots in this game, four of them on target. He was just unplayable. He was taking players on. He was going right, left, shooting. He scored. Uh, he went close to scoring another two times. Um, you said last week that this is becoming clara as Napoli. Yeah. And he absolutely right. Ossiman, I have to say, I've been really disappointed. I feel like, I'm always feel like he's, he's gone. I feel like he just doesn't care anymore. He doesn't he's, care. He's it's obvious maybe, he doesn't care. Maybe the Champions League, um, I think yeah. probably there'll be a new level of motivation. Exactly. In the League, he's thrown it in, in the, in the league. He's going through the motions. It's all Clara that's driving the team. He was brilliant. If he plays like this against Barcelona, then um, Napoli are, are, are right in there with a chance because absolutely he was. This was this was simply world class. Like he's playing at a world class level now under Katsona. So that is the big well, positive. Let's I'm, can... I agree with all of that. But the only thing I want to add is I'm not sure I'm ready to write Napoli off. Because... I'm not writing them off. I'm just saying that. You know they've got a lot to do, and and is their improvement going to be fast enough to? Well, to I, I'm not. I look at this the results this weekend, and I see that they actually they didn't they gained a point on Bologna, and they maintained the same distance to to Atalanta and Roma. They they've got the games they got going on, of course, Barcelona and Inter before the international break, and then of course Atalanta, Monza, Frosinone, Empoli before Roma. That's when this is going to be decided. I think Napoli. I think Napoli have enough quality to maybe, you know, win not all of those games, but four out of five. And if they do that and, and draw one, then then we're talking what seventeen points, and and two, you know, before they go up against um, direct rival in. They, in Roma. I think this was a. I think this was a mistake seeing as they've got Inter away this weekend. Roma have Sassuolo, um, so I mean, you know, Napoli lose. They're looking at well seven points behind Roma and then mm. they've got a lot to do. So I just think that, you know, they can't, they can't really slip up now from here and, and it's, 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 it's going to be difficult, but I'm certain that the improvement, they, they're now playing at a level where um, they are, I, I, I really think that they've got a chance uh, against mm. Barcelona. Um, so it's, Absolutely. It's, I, I, it's 50-50 for me against Barcelona. There's no also Barcelona because I side. didn't realise that the Barcelona are actually not playing at the Camp Nou um, either. Um, yeah. They're playing at their other grounds because of the renovation. So yeah. it's, it's um, they're going to lose something from that as well. Uh, mm. ba- ba- Barcelona, uh, as long with the injuries I, uh, and uh, the injury situation, and of course Xavi and the disaster that is Barcelona this season. Generally, they just they're not a very good side, Barcelona this year, and they they just look like a mess. Um, I. I don't know. I I, I, th- I give Napoli a historic chance to upset Barcelona here. To be honest, away. Yeah, but I mean they've 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 improved their form now. I mean they're they're they I think they're unbeaten in about nine games now, and they've won six of them. I think so. They they yeah. are in they are in, in improved form. Barcelona. We definitely can't. Um, pre- no, it's fifty fifty. Yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's fifty fifty. I I think Napoli have a fantastic chance to reach the quarter maybe. final. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, we'll see. I'd maybe maybe put Barcelona slight favourites, but I do think but I do think Napoli can go through. Um, okay. I'll just round up the rest of the Serie A results. Cagliari for Salernitana, uh, two two wins in a row, four unbeaten for Cagliari. They're, they're they're in a good run. Um, Sassuolo one, Frosinone in nil. Huge win for Sassuolo. Caio. Uh, George missing an 89th minute penalty for Frosinone, who now go into relegation zone. Uh, Genoa 2, Monza 3, very exciting game. And Lecce nil, Verona 1. And the big news from that is Roberto De Versa headbutting Thomas Henry at the end yeah. of the game and now being sacked by mm. Lecce. And they have used that excuse. I think they've done him over dirty here, Lecce. They basically, you, they're basically going to use the headbutting as a reason not to pay him off. Um, I mean, they're obviously in a bad run of form, which might be the real reason they're getting rid of him, but they're going to use the headbutt as a, as an excuse not to pay him off. And uh, they've done him dirty here, but I mean, he can only blame himself. You can't, I'm sorry. You can't headbutt a, a, headbutt a player. Yeah. Look, that, that was my silly ass to be honest, because that entire incident and the whole, his excuse, and <laughs> sad excuse on social media as well. I mean, it was insane, mm. but again, this is when the, you know, the pressure's mounting on these T and when you have, 
Like, you know, look from, from 13 to 19, three points separate seven teams. It's insane. Um, it's, it's, you know, the pressure is on. Verona, Cagliari, Lecce, Empoli, Udinese, Frosinone, and Sassuolo are all in the title, in the relegation scrap. And and many of these teams, like Frosinone and Lecce, have not been anywhere near this all season. Um, so it's, it is a problem for them. And then the pressure mounts when you thought that you were out of the woods, but you're actually in, in peril. Um, but of course, there's no excuse for what he did. Uh, but it's, it's, um, yeah. it's quite interesting. I mean, I think Frosinone are going down now. I think that result against Sassuolo is is so they, they couldn't afford to lose that and missing a penalty like that. I think Frosinone are going down. The question is who joins them. Um, Sassuolo... I, I, listen, I, I think uh, I can't call it. I think I think anything could happen between thirteenth to nineteenth. I think any of them can go down. Of course, there's not of honestly course. there's not one of those that I can say sit here and say I think that team that team's going to be okay. I, I I don't. I think I really think it's. Take your just, just yeah. Put all the names in a hat. Pick one out. It could be any of them, or any mm. two of them. It's it's in, it's impossible to call. Every week it changes. One team goes in, that pulls in. Another team comes out. It's it's uh, it's, it's mad, isn't it? It's, uh, it's absolutely yeah. mad. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. European fixtures. So Barcelona and Napoli on Tuesday in the second leg of the Champions League last sixteen, which we which we said one one from the first leg. Then Atletico uh, against Inter. Um, both these games in in Spain. Inter, of course, one nil uh, ahead from the first leg. Uh, Atletico home record is amazing, by the way, this season. I think they've got the best home record in Europe, if I'm not mistaken, in the league. Um, but but obviously Inter looking really really strong. Griezmann. Uh, I think that could be key. If he's out, then I, I'm really feeling really confident for him. So if he's back, then and he's properly fit, um, I think he'll play. I think Simeone's playing mind games there. Of course he we'll is. <laughs> he's playing, it's so obvious what he's doing. It's hilarious, and and it's like he did it for the, before the first leg as well. And all of a sudden, Morata came on, and uh, it's it's just him being. It's just him being. <laughs> it's just him being himself. And yeah, I don't think anyone falls for it. No, but look, um, yeah, no, I think Inter Inter have um, Inter have a. It's going to be difficult as hell. Um, I, I saw a stat somewhere that Atletico Madrid have not lost at home in a knockout game in Europe since the 90s or something. Like something crazy like that. I don't know. About that. I mean, they don't, that doesn't matter uh, because Inter don't need to win. So it's fine. They could draw. It'll be fine. Well, that's what I mean. And that, that's good for Inter, but it's not going to be an easy game. Um, no, that, it's not. Because it, it, they are a very good side and I think they're going to... You know, I think they're gonna. It's going to be a very tactical game, and I think that Inter are going to struggle. And I think they need it to give that performance and, and have that run through a dress rehearsal, like they did defensively against Bologna uh, ahead of that Atletico game. It's going to be difficult, um, but yeah, no, look, it's uh, that's going to be a battle, and it's going to be exhausting. Inter are going to be exhausted, but then again, so are Napoli because they, you know, when they they both play each other this weekend, and because I mean, playing away to Barcelona is not going to be easy either. So uh, no, it's that, that those two those two ties are fascinating. They really, really are. Mm. Okay. And Milan, Atalanta, Roma. I yeah, mean, yeah. Roma Brighton nil, Roma four. That's in Brighton second leg. Uh, Milan, Milan have to be careful. Slavia yeah. Prague two, Milan four, and then Atalanta one, Sporting one. I mean, Italian teams are all in a all in a decent position going into the, the second leg. And just Atalanta, just hope that they're physically. In, in good in good condition. That's my only concern. That's exactly it. I mean, Roma and Milan. They have I think they've got. Through. I think they've got Sporting Lisbon's number tactically. I yeah. think they've got them. They've shown that in all three games. Um, yeah. It's just the, the, the physical side of things. Yeah. Um, it's exhausting, isn't it? I mean, it's well, it is. They're playing every three days and, and, and all tough days. games. Milan, all tough, in, exactly. Milan into Bologna, uh, Sporting Juventus, Sporting again. I mean, it's it's it's, it's going to take it's itself. crazy. Yeah, it really every three is. days. Yeah. And yeah. then they got Fiorentina and uh, Napoli after that. I mean, of course, yeah. there's an international break. And then the Coppa Italia as well. Yeah. <laughs> we get Fiorentina and then the Europa again. League last quarterfinals <laughs> as well, if they get there. So it's going to be non- Mental, non-stop for them. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's finish off with Baggio, Primface and Serie Ass of the Week. So Baggio, we've got Danny Motta. Danny Motta, Danny Motta. Kick. Yeah. From Monza against Genoa. Magnificent, magnificent goal. Um, then we have, I have, and I don't care, you can all criticise me if you, as much as you want, the Roma banner against the Queen in Badger of the Week. Absolutely magnificent. Fantastic. <laughs> brilliant. 
fantastic. Anything against the royal family, I'm, I'm totally fine with. <laughs> I don't care how insulting it is. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Magnificent. I love that Brighton have put in an official complaint about it as well, which I find hilarious. <laughs> like, why? What's it got to do with Brighton? Like, do, do you know what I mean? This is this is what I'm. This is what I talk about. People kind of like bowing down to authority. Like, who cares? Like, what's it got to do with Brighton? I mean, the oh. royal family can put in a complaint if they want, but what, why Brighton got to put one in? <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, um, it was, it, that banner. But it's just the thing is like it's part of Italian ultras culture. They there anything goes on mm. on banners. I mean, one I remember one banner that Inter fans had it when playing Milan and that's a that's there's like a peace treaty between them in terms of violence they don't go up against each other violently but you know Barbara Berlusconi loves Bukake in a giant <laughs> giant banner like you know that's the level we're at here like this is what they do um so so yeah and and, and of, you know there's lots of stuff like that and, and it's just like it's raw it's unhinged and that's why it's shock value and so you giggle but yeah, it, it's it's um, yeah, they don't, it's just part of Italian ultras culture. Like, love it, hate it, it is what it is. But I'd rather they use banners than than stab and punch each other. Well, yeah, that's the other side of things as well. Absolutely, that's, I prefer the banners to the to the violence. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. But yeah. but I just got to say the Danny Motta scissor volley kick was insane. Please go watch that. It's one of the goals mm. of the season. I also want to give a shout out to do this with Italian sport. Uh, the Italy rugby team beat in Scotland. First home win in 11 years in Six Nations. They were magnificent. They were mm. so, so good. And that came after they drew with France. The, the Italy rugby team is really improving. Um, yeah. It's really, really improving. And it was a deserved win. They were fantastic. Um, so they now play Wales in the last game. And um, yeah, if they win that, I mean, it's been a brilliant Brilliant tournament. So, yeah, really well done to the Italy rugby team. Prem face. Uh, we, uh, we've got two on here. The first one is the TNT commentator uh, during the Lazio versus Bayern Munich game in Munich that Munich went by and won 3 0. Fletcher. Um, I can't remember his first name. Something mm. Fletcher. Anyways, the, the main commentator for TNT. Uh, he called Loren- uh, Luca Pellegrini, the Lazio left back, Lorenzo Pellegrini throughout. The I've been, game. I did that for about a good two years too, because I couldn't get it. Like I, I confused them, which one's Lorenzo, which one's Luca, like for a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> I used to constantly get, no, oh, Lorenzo, no, Luca, Lorenzo, no. It's um... <laughs> the second one. The second one's Paul Merson, Jeez. who, <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm going to preface and say I love Paul Merson. I've, I've, I've interviewed him as a, a couple player. Of times. I loved him absolutely. A fantastic I've... player, and but as a person, he's a mag- he's a fantastic person. He really is. He's one of the good guys in football. Like he's so kind. He's so like uh, empathetic and cares about other people. He's a wonderful person. But yeah, he he he's, can be a bit of a come up with the old prem face comment. No, no, it's, it's not. It's like it's like a it's like a prem face hall of fame. Yeah. I'd be shocked if we England don't win it. Only two France players would get in the England team. It's like it's a t- it's a checklist of prem facery. Yeah. It's like tick 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 tick, and it's like again, England are among the favourites to win the Euros. There's no doubt about that, and I, I personally think they will do it. But to say that only two France players would get in the England team is nonsense. It's just nonsense. Yeah, like, what nonsense. are you talking about? Yeah, Magnon gets in, Teo gets in, at least one centre-back, I'd say two centre-backs mm, to both. get in. So that's four already. Then you've got Chouameni, I would, would get, would, would certainly get oh, in at yeah. centre midfield. Because England have only got one centre midfielder, they don't have another, another one. Um, and then, uh, and obviously, Saka, Mbappe, Mbappe obviously gets in as well. Um, so uh, you've got, Kane, you've got Foden, five, at least five, at least five, if not six. Saka, Kane, Foden, the rest French. Come on, keep it simple. It's Saka, I'd probably, Foden. I'd pick Kyle Kane. Walker because because no. France don't have a right back. They don't have a right back. They don't have anyone at right. They play centre backs at right back, like Kunde, who's horrible there. Um, <laughs> as we'll see during the as, you'll, as everybody will see during the Barcelona game uh, against Clara. <laughs> Clara can have a, can have a, have a lot of fun against him because he's not a right back. He's a centre back. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. Paul Merson, I love you, but yeah, Prem face. Uh, Serie of the week, we've already done. It it's is... Diversa. It's got to be Diversa. Diversa, yeah. Uh, it's just... And and I saw a weird tweet from Milan as well about kilometres and Pulisic, which mm. I didn't understand. Oh, I, I do have another Serie of the week. I didn't write it down. It was the actually the official Serie A, uh, 
account again. Surprise, Ooh, surprise. Shock, during the, the, <laughs> this is actually not from last week. It's from the Sunday before. So it's from like eight days ago, but we didn't include it last week. But um, So when Cavara scored against Juventus, um, the Serie A official Twitter account, uh, I can't remember what the exact tweet was, but it was something like, oh, Cavara humiliating Juventus again, or, so, or something like that. Like it was just something that you just don't do as the official neutral. They area. did something on the weekend, which was the most embarrassing. I was, I was, I was, I almost coughed up a lung when Lapadula for Cagliari scored a way, a goal was nothing special about it. And they were hyping it up. Stop that Lapadula as if he did like, like Messi dribbling six players. Like it was so embarrassing. It's Lapadula. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's just, it wasn't anything special about it. It was just, oh, they, they are, they are a walk. It was like angle. Liverpool. It was like Mohamed Salah winning the Pushkas award for that, like tapping for Liverpool. <laughs> and everybody voted for him to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Oh, okay, no, right, no. let's leave it at that. Um yeah, long show today. Um we will <laughs> um be back on Tuesday for the Q and A and then Thursday for the review of the, the, the two big Champions League games. Massive, massive, massive um matches for Napoli and for Inter. Um so yeah, big week ahead. Uh, enjoy the week everybody. See you on Tuesday. Ciao ciao. <laughs>